So you actually like planned to be a librarian. It's a deliberate choice that you made. So how did you decide librarian is what you wanted to be? Uh, so it was it was kind of a split second decision. <laughs> um, I was just married and was looking for jobs in the area where my husband lived, and I found a posting for an archivist at a university nearby. Um, and I looked at that and I said, you know, that's something I could enjoy doing for the rest of my life. And so when my husband came home that night, I said, guess what, honey, I'm going to grad school. <laughs> Um, admittedly, at first, I thought that I was going to be an academic librarian, that I would work in a college, like the posting that I saw. Um, but once I started working on my degree, I learned a little bit more about public libraries and started working in those. And it's worked out great so far. <laughs> so how did you end up in Hopkinton? So I uh, first started working in Hopkinton in 2019 as the part-time technology librarian. So I kind of got a toe in and then found that I really, really liked it here. So when the position for adult services librarian uh, became available, I applied for that and got it. And then more recently, when the supervisor, reference supervisor position became available, I applied for that one. So this is actually my second promotion here in Hopkinton. Um, and I really like it here, which is why I, why, I keep, why I keep applying for positions here. So you mentioned it was a split second decision to become a librarian. So what did young Danielle Cook think she was going to be when she grew up? Uh, young Danielle Cook had no idea, but she was adamant to everybody who saw her reading and told her that she was going to be a librarian, that she was not indeed going to be a librarian. <laughs> so people predicted that you should be a librarian? Yes, yes. Multiple people told me when I was little that I was going to be a librarian, and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that worked out. I know, they were all right. Much to my chagrin. Well, <laughs> much to my then chagrin. Now I'm happy with it. <laughs> so. There's been, I think, a lot of changes in like libraries because of COVID and just because of new technologies emerging. Has it changed a lot since you've come into the profession? It hasn't, it hasn't. Um, you're right that a lot of the, um, how to phrase it, maybe like methods that we use to provide services have changed, but the services themselves haven't changed. So we have seen since COVID and, and during COVID especially, a really big uptick in the number of people using our audiobooks or using our electronic databases because they're easier to access from home, which was very important when we were closed. Um, but at the end of the day, those folks are still checking out books. And so one of the things that have been integral to libraries from the beginning is books. So that's still the case. Um, similarly, during COVID, we started offering programs remotely so folks could uh, watch via Zoom or HCAM sometimes. Um, and so I would say I would say that our, at our core, we've stayed the same, but maybe the way that we do some things have changed. So yes, you're right. Books integral to libraries, that makes sense. <laughs> but I know Hopkinton Library has more than just books. They also have the library things, which you are a main force behind. So tell us about that program. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I really love our library of things. Um, it's something that I actually started working on in a different library. And then when I came to Hopkinton, that was one of the things that they were excited about for me as a candidate was that I had led that initiative in other libraries so I had some experience with it. Our library of things here consists of a number of different items and we're adding stuff regularly. Um, so most recently we added some musical instruments. We have an electric keyboard, a ukulele, and a guitar. We've also added a child carrier for hiking, which the Trails Club donated. So that's really great. So if you've got a little one whose legs aren't quite steady yet, you can put them in the carrier and carry them with you, which is fantastic. Um, and we also have items like uh, craft supplies, so knitting needles, crochet hooks, looms, those sorts of things that folks might want to try first before jumping in and buying us a bunch of stuff. We've also got some very small home maintenance items, um, like a an energy monitor to try and figure out what um, appliances you have or that are pulling tons of energy, a an outlet tester, um, a humidity monitor, so just little things that folks might want to use to determine weak points in their home or things that they can improve upon. Um, and we've got board games and uh, tabletop role-playing game kits. Uh, and like I said, we're adding stuff all the time. I know that children's items are a big thing that folks have been asking for. We're working on that. We've got some kinks to work out with that before we can release that stuff, but it's on the way. Uh, and, and we're just really excited about it and excited to um, hear how the community is using the things that we're offering and excited to hear what sorts of things they think would be useful to them that they would like us to loan. What would you say?